Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over basically how to win the hundred thousand or the two hundred thousand uh, in uh, UFC this week on uh, on DraftKings. And again, we 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 separate the DraftKings videos into two distinct videos. Uh, we went over who the best plays were a couple of days ago. Actually, that was yesterday. And today we're completely focused on lineup construction. We're going to use Saber Sim and pull out all the stops <laughs> to try to walk that, you know, that fine line between picking lineups that have a chance to win and those that are not going to be picked by that many people. And when you have only 12 fights and, you know, only 24 fighters to choose from, it becomes very, very challenging. And, you know, we could, there, there are certain techniques you can use kind of by hand, you know, kind of instinctive stuff. And then you could use some of the the calculations that, you know, SaberSim and other simulators and optimizers like SaberSim can provide. So these videos are, you know, kind of food for thought. You know, we're going to put, you know, we're going to build my 150 lineups. And quite honestly, we're not even going to look at who we have because it's really not even that important. The important thing is, is the, uh, is the process. And just coming up with ideas of how to, you know, get these unique lineups. Um, I mean, look, I, I hate to belittle the 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 process of figuring out who the who the best plays are, but it's really not that difficult. And and, and this particular week, I mean, it's pricing is so soft. I mean, it's it's very very clear. I mean, what you're supposed to do if if you had no worries about getting duped. I mean, you listen. You want to know what you want to know how to play? Okay, this is what you do. Um, you take one of, uh, the, uh, you take one of Dober or John Silver, John Silver, one of these two, I don't know which one doesn't matter. Okay. They're both priced to move. Right? You, then you take one of these two between Al Razak Al Hassan and Cody Brundage. You take one of them, right? The, the, both of these are mid range priced fights with a lot of upside from both sides, then you're probably supposed to take one of these guys, either Petrovsky or Josh Fremd, same basic idea. Then if you want, you could take Jasmine Jaws, uh, Jaws Devicious. I mean, she's got all kinds of takedown upside. She's got money line value. And then basically take your pick between some really, really good favorites, you know, Elder, Bonfim, Santos, uh, Nama Yunus. I mean, all of these with these four, like for example, Okay, you really don't have to do much more than that to come up with good lineups. But again, we're, we're not trying to just come up with good lineups. We're trying to find lineups that that not that many people are going to play. And a whole ton of people are going to play what I just said, because it's just way too easy and it's way too logical. So when it comes to, you know, to winning this, you know, winning as much of this hundred thousand as you can you have to make sacrifices you can't play those types of lineups in that tournament you're just going to be duped way too often so we have to come up with with, with the process or some ideas of how to play decent lineups and yet uh <laughs> reduce uh reduce the amount of times they're they're likely to be duped um so First thing we did was we ran uh, Saber Sim. We put our projections in and we ran, what did we run? All 150, 150 lineups? Actually, we ran 5,000 lineups, right? Let me just make sure we did. Yeah, 5,000 lineups and, you know, using my projections, whatever. And then you you it's all about how you rank these things. I promise you this, that the 150 I'm going to play is going to come from those 5,000. You don't need more than that for a 12 fight card. Okay. Um, the question is which ones, I mean, how do you rank them? The first thing that we always have to look at. Okay. Is this MMA default setting. And, and this is why when you're trying to put lineups together that, you know, are great to have a shot to win, but also are unique. There are only a couple of things you really can do. Number one is you could force in low ownership. And we're going to get to that, a way to do that. You could also um, leave money on the table uh, on purpose. Um, you know, play your chalky players or play your good plays, but leave some money on the table such that 
um, uh, while those particular players are not going to be unique, the combination of them could end up being unique. So that's another thing you can do. And we'll talk about that. Um, and that's really all you can do, right? I mean, you play low owned players or low owned combinations and kind of a hybrid of that is using these, this particular setting called MMA defaults within the Saber Sim system. So uh, let's review what this is. MMA default within the Saber score, you know, family, when you click on the eyeball, and you get into the weeds of what this formula is, this is one of the more aggressive ways to rank lineups there is because of two uh, functions. One, this 99th percentile uh, thing here. What this means is that we're going to rank these lineups based on their 99th percentile outcome, not their median outcome. And then this minus 0.3 times sum adjusted ownership so what this means is that it's really trying to ding these lineups if they have uh if they are uh if they're too popular, okay, if their ownership is too high. Um so this is very, very aggressive. And and if you play this type of of setting, uh you really better not look at who you have because you're you're you you're not gonna be happy, okay? Um, but that's okay. Because we're not talking about who we want. We're talking about what we need, okay? What we need are lineups that have a shot, but not that good that everybody's going to be playing them, okay? So this type of setting is an important part of the portfolio. Now, one thing that I've done is I created my own kind of, uh, whatchamacallit, custom setting called Sheets Default. And what that does... If you get into that, um, let's see. Under sheets default, let's look at the at the formula there. Um, okay, so we change this a little bit. It's almost like MMA default, except instead of the 99th percentile, we put in the 95th percentile. So made it a little more tenable, but yet still, it's extremely extremely uh, aggressive. So the first question that I always ask is, is how many lineups of the, of the, uh, whatchamacallit, of the uh, 150 are we going to allocate to the, um, to this really aggressive uh, metric? Um, I'd like to always allocate at least 50. And on a 12 fight card, I think that's very reasonable. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to use the top 50 from this setting. And the only question after that is, don't, don't worry about who we have. It's not, a, it's not, it's not important. Okay. It does, we're not even showing the, the percentages anyway. Um, do we want to do min uniques one or two? Meaning that, if we're going to get that aggressive, maybe we shouldn't be too concentrated. So let's, 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 let's do that. Let's go min uniques too. Okay. Nice and easy. Um, So let's save these 50. Now, where are we going to save them? We can save them to the favorites, but instead let's save them to its own spreadsheet. We're going to get to Y in a minute. All right. So save to CSV. Why is it not letting me do that? Hmm. It should allow me to just save these, but all right. So, you know, let's put them in the favorites. That's fine too. Just make sure that we can see them. Yeah. Okay. Then we have nine others from before. We'll get to those in a minute. It's a nice stolen base by Hanniger. All right. So then we will, um, what's the ninth inning? We'll, we'll sweat that in a minute. Uh, okay, so we have 50 lineups from this ilk. So we've already taken some lineups. Is he, is he out? Oh, he's safe. Um, the only uh, 
so we've created some lineups with upside that are probably going to be low owned, at least as a combination. So the next thing is that how many do we want to play where we leave salary on the table and how much salary? Well, first things first, let's, let's, should we run the sim and then actually it doesn't make too much of a difference. We don't need to run a sim because we're going to take the top, you know, we're using these 5,000 lineups anyway. So let's just, this is what we're going to do. Let's go to Sim Diversity 10. So this is the kind of the just the general Saber Sim uh ranking, which is pretty, pretty aggressive, but not it, it usually is not enough to 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 be, you know, without a lot of dupes. So we're gonna start with these and then we're gonna figure out how much we're gonna leave on the table. So I think what we gotta do is just look at our underdogs that we like. Uh that would be Petrowski, as I mentioned before. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Brundage. Was Brundage the cheapest of the underdogs I was looking at? I think so. So if Brundage is 7,700, you know, for example, uh, that's leaving 800 on the table to get to Al Hassan. So I think that's actually what, what I want to do. So let's take these and leave 800 on the table. So let's go filter, add filter. Uh, salary less than um, 49,300, right? This way, we leave at least 800 on the table. Save filter. Okay. So now we're going to have 50 lineups where we leave 800 uh, or so on the table. So I think that's that's pretty strong. So let's save these. We'll put these into the favorites. And now let's see how many uh, how many we have. We have 109. So now we have 41 other lineups that we need to create. Okay, we've we've done a pretty good job. We've left a decent amount of money on the table. We use those high upside lineups. And then what what else is there left to do? Well, I think what's sort of healthy is to pick kind of a pool of players that you want and then just try to get as um as low owned as you can so like for example let's uh let's take out first of all, let's take out this filter the the salary filter and let's just take out the fighters we don't like such as um uh Sally Koff, um Cortez, we didn't like her really. Didn't like Ponzinibbio or Lusa or Agapova or Darius Flowers or Charles Johnson. Didn't like Fatima Klein particularly. Montel Jackson was on the border, as was Damon Blackshear, but we didn't really like them too much. Uh, didn't really like Arosa. Van was okay. We didn't like Charles Johnson, but Christian Rodriguez was kind of okay. And we we like all these fighters. So with these fighters, let's apply and only use them. And didn't wasn't quite able to do it. Okay, wasn't quite able to do it. But if we use both, at least Blackshear and Arosa, now let's see if we can get there. And now we can get there. So all these fighters, okay are going to make the pool of the remaining 50, but they're all kind of good plays. So what we have to do is either, you know, take salary off, which we've already tried, or we could try MMA default, which we've already tried, or we could do geo mean filtering. And what that does is again, force in low ownership, but I don't know if that's going to work because nobody in here is low owned. I'm I'm not even sure if we're going to be able to get a ranking of MMA default from this group. I guess I guess we will. Yeah. Okay. Um 
but I don't know if I wanted to play a Rosa. That was the problem. If I get rid of a Rosa, am I going to be able to get what I want? It's going to be tough. But, but, so I guess that's not really an option here. So what are we going to do with our remaining, I guess, 40 lineups? We could just run a sim and play 40 there. Now it's going to end up not being very, um, it's going to end up not being very unique, but I think we did a good job with the other lineups to get somewhat unique. So I think we can get away with it. So let's uh, let's run a sim here. We're going to run it against for the throwdown. We're going to run it against the flagship MME setting. So we're going to hit run contest sim. And we will put it, what is this? Here's the throwdown. Let me just make sure that we got this right. Uh, we will toggle away, then we'll toggle back. Okay. So the, the question now is whether to go min uniques one, min uniques two, what else? I, we got to do at least min uniques two, maybe even more. So we got to dip down like a little bit. Um, so this is going to be a pretty chalky group, okay? But, you know, from a portfolio manager's perspective, maybe it's not so bad to get some chalk to balance the rest of this out. But I'd love to leave something on the table here at least. So what if we take a different underdog, like even Petrosky, and and fed off him and leave 400 on the table. Is that fair at least? Okay, fine. So let's do that. Let's uh, filter, add filter, salary, less than 49,700. All right. Not bad. So let's put these into the favorites. We should have almost 157. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much what I want to do. You know, uh, I didn't do any geo mean filtering this time. Um, I, I've expressed my concern with that. I mean, I could just to show you what it would look like. I mean, why not? Let's let's try it. So instead of filtering by salary using the Sims, we could do geo mean filtering. The way we do that is let's let's first of all figure out what the geo mean needs to be to minimize dupes. So, so let's take a look. Uh, how many people were in this tournament? Twenty seven thousand four fifty. So let's pull up geo mean. Achievement calculator. Safe. Ooh. So what did I say? 24,000? 27,450. So we put in 27,450. And so you're going to need a geo mean of 18 to get like only one dupe, for example. I think it's going to be difficult to do. Let's, let's see. Geo mean. Less than 19, say. So you only get eight lineups out of all this. Um, so th and that's so that's not a good sign. Okay. It's not a good sign for the geo mean that that you can only get eight lineups out of the top five thousand um if you do it this way. If you go min uniques one, you can play 20 lineups like this. But maybe we should. I mean, instead of, you know, instead of um, getting too chalky with that other group. Now, nah, I think we're just going to keep it the way it is. But this is definitely an option, okay? This is like really my last decision is whether I want to include these. 
what have I done? Okay, so I did 50 of the of the sheets default. I did 50 of the leaving a lot of money on the table. And then I did some sims where I left 400 on the table. I think that's I think that's good enough. I just think that's good enough. So now it's the question of of going back into my favorites, saving to the contests. We'll save it into the Throwdown, boom. And off to the races. Now, again, I have not checked to see who I had, and I don't plan on it until, until the fights start. <laughs> um, but you know what I can do? I mean, I could I could work on I could do a little construction for my whatchamacallit. Ooh, look at this. Doing well in baseball for the uh, 555. And again, it's, it's not particularly difficult, you know. But even here, I mean, I don't know how chalky I want to even get. I mean, I, you play a, a lineup like this, but even this lineup is going to be probably really chalky. You know? I could trade this in for Rose. Actually, without Rose, this isn't bad. But that's what I'm going to do with these big buy-ins is just play the those types of plays that I've mentioned when we first started the video. So, okay, nothing too fancy this time. Uh, hopefully, um, this works out for us. I know that the process was good. So we'll just, we'll have to check and see. We have to, we'll have to see what our SIM ROI looks like when the, uh, actually the tournament starts. And then we'll see, and we'll keep trying. That's it. Good luck.